Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamemodguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape version 1.42 to create line art and coloring using the pencil tool, the note tool, patterns along paths, and clip groups. The designs start with a rough sketch. I add the line art, add more details, add the basic coloring below, and then another layer of coloring on top. The advantage of this approach is that it's editable. It's all based on vector shapes. I can easily manipulate those. Seeing all lines are fully editable vector paths, I can go in with the Node tool and fine tune them. Inkscape doesn't have brushes as such, but I can create simple vector shapes and use these with the pencil tool. The result is a pattern along paths that is easy to manipulate by altering the content of your clipboard. I select the teardrop shape, copy it and paste it in the pattern long pass panel and the line changes to a stretched version of that shape. Let's start a new design. I have the sketch of this little girl. I use the pencil tool to draw the main features. Select the pill shape to start with. Select the shape, Control C copies into the clipboard. And for the shape of my pencil tool, I select the option from clipboard. The result is a softly tapered line with a long center and little tapering towards the end. Different shapes give me different lines, more or less tapering. The one thing to remember is that the color is not defined by the shape, but by your fill color. Inkscape will use the last fill color you assigned to the next object you draw. Start drawing the main shapes first. It's easy to get lost in detail and add too many lines. You can adjust the width of the line in the pass effect panel or with the node tool there is an extra node at the start of the line. It's a little odd that Inkscape seems to remember the changes only when they are applied with the node tool. The node tool lets me adjust the line and the pattern will be stretched accordingly. It is a lot easier to draw those lines with the pencil tool and adjust with the node tool later. I could create the same effect using the pen tool, draw the line, curve it, apply a pattern along pass and paste the pattern to it. The pencil tool allows me to do that a little bit more comfortably. For the eye and the hair, I'm going with the more tapered shape. I select that shape, copy it into the clipboard, select the pencil tool again and continue drawing. The result is a distinctly different shape. I change the widths and draw the bottom line as a different shape to allow for a different stroke width. See, I'm happy with this eye. Rather than try to replicate an identical version on the other side, I duplicate, flip and move the eye into position. Two black circles in the color layer complete the eyes. I copy the tapered shape to continue with the hair and draw more lines and lots and lots of hair. I find it helps to zoom in in order not to get too cramped up in tiny spots while drawing tiny details. Zoom in, you're working with vectors, draw big lines even if they appear tiny in the final design. At the same time, don't forget to zoom out every now and then to see the whole picture. While I draw more lines, I speed up the video in order not to bore you to death. As with all my videos, this is not about clicking here and clicking there to replicate what I'm doing. It's about understanding the process in order to apply it to your own designs. Looking at the layer panel, I just realized I am working in a different layer. I select all the line art cut it and paste it in the ink layer to keep the file organized and easy to edit. 
I switch to the drop shape for the next lot of hairs, changing the width and the curve in order not to look too repetitive. The advantage of working with vectors is the ease in which everything can be edited. I can move multiple areas, scale them, skew them, rotate them, adjust the stroke widths, add more lines, increase or decrease areas without compromising on quality. This allows me to compensate for the loss of motor skills I suffer in my hands. It allows me to create clear and crisp line art without having to worry about precision as much as I would using paper and ink. With the line art done, it's time to add color. I create a new layer, use the pencil tool, set the pencil shape to none. That way I can just draw vector shapes. I start with the shapes at the bottom of the stack, that way I can just overlap rather than draw the detail for each shape to match the line art every time. The shoulders overlap the collar, the collar overlaps the neck, the neck will overlap the chin. It's just a faster way than trying to be accurate with all my shapes. If I need to be exact, I can use the boolean operation at a later stage and cut out overlapping parts. I add a gradient fill for some basic shading to define the neck and see the line between the neck and the face. I use circle shapes rather than the pencil tool for the eyes. It's fun to play around with different colors, seeing they're all vector shapes, it's easy to adjust the fill color. With the rough shapes in place, I use the node tool to fine tune and adjust the color shapes to match the line art. I create a gradient for the basic shading and use the same gradient for the other two shapes. If you're unsure about your shading colors, create a shape on top, give it a dark tone like a deep purple or a dark brown, set the layer blend mode to multiply and play around with the opacity until you find the right color. Use the color picker to pick that color and apply it to existing objects or to newly created shading shapes. To shape the face, I duplicate the main shape, scale it down, alter the color of the original to a slightly darker tone, and add a blur to the lighter part. Increase the blur to get a smooth shading. Adjust the colors. In this case, the base doesn't look quite dark enough, so I give it a slightly darker tone and bring back the duplicate below the white of the eyes. I darken the neck as well, but the gradient alone won't be enough. I'll create additional shapes. In order to contain them and the blur, I turn the face, the neck and the shoulders into clip groups. I select the lighter shape of the face, cut it, and place it inside the clip group. That way any blurs or overlapping shapes will be trimmed. Unlike a clip, the clip group allows me to easily add to and edit the content inside the clip. I add the color for the nose and the cheeks to that clip. I use the same blurred oval to shade the neck and use it again as the base for the color around the eye.
I duplicate and mirror this shape and use it on the other side. To soften it even further, I add a gradient. That way it fades towards the nose. I reuse the same gradient on the right side. After some adjustments of the shapes and the coloring of the shirt, adding a gradient to this one as well, the base colors are done. When working on more complex designs, remember to save often. I created one file with line art, one now that the basic coloring is in, and save as a new version before I add the highlights. Using the pencil tool with the tapered shape, I switch the shape setting back to from clipboard and draw the highlights in the hair as tapered lines. By increasing the opacity, I can create stronger highlights. It helps to vary and not just use one setting of the width or the opacity. It just looks too repetitive. I use the same shape for the highlights on the face, blurring some of the shapes to soften them. I can adjust all my lines easily with the note tool, placing the highlights right where I want them. By changing the color to a darker tone, the highlight becomes a shadow shape. Especially for facial features, it helps to use a blur to create soft shading. Combine softer blurred shapes with non-blurred shapes for stronger highlights, like the gloss look on the lips. Seeing I'm working below the line art, I can use a darker fill color to create shadows and add more texture to the hair. To add more details, I use transparent circles for freckles. Place them randomly, duplicate and mirror them, and move them around and vary their opacity slightly. And with that, the illustration is pretty much done. From sketch to line art to base colors and highlights on top of that, let's create one slightly more complex brush shape. I use the teardrop, deform it with the node tool, duplicate the shape and adjust it. Vary the lengths and combine all four shapes into one using the pass union. In order to work as a pattern along pass, it needs to be a single pass. I scale it down a bit, copy it, and use it with the pencil tool. The result is one line appearing as four strokes. I can use this shape to add more texture to the hair. You might have noticed that all the shapes I use are aligned horizontally. The reason is the stretching along paths when you use the pencil tool. The pattern along paths allows you to scatter along the path. With the pencil tool, it automatically works as a stretch shape. A shape like this can also be used for cross hatching or to add more texture. I select all those lines, cut them and paste them inside the clip group I already have for the shirt. A lighter color might look a little bit better, so I change it from a dark tone to a light yellow. I'm sure I could fiddle around with this design a little longer, but I'm running out of time. I'm reaching the 15 minute mark. I use the pencil tool, the note tool, pattern along pass and the clip groups to create a simple line art drawing that I then colored in. 
simple shapes copied to the clipboard, define the lines to give the line art a more interesting look. There's really no limit to the complexity of the shapes you can create. That's going to be the topic for another tutorial. Even with the simple shapes, you can have a lot of fun and use them in different ways. Play around with it and give it a go. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like and I will see you again soon.